Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Thanks, thanks for thank having you. us. Thanks for having us, everyone. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning, okay? So I hear, Sam, that you reached out to the author of James Fry to secure yeah. the rights to the film. Can you yeah. talk about what made you reach out to him? Well, I'd read the book when it first came out in um, 2005, I think, and uh, and I remember when I read it, it just had it had a profound effect on me, and I think partly I'd never read anything which was such sort of free-form consciousness the way that he wrote, and you know, subsequently learned that he never rereads what he's written, so it's just a, this this flow, and uh, and it stayed with me, and I and I thought it was such a, a powerful story, and the characters surrounding it was so incredibly written and and the way that they came to life in my mind I just knew it was going to make an interesting movie at some point and I wasn't a filmmaker then I was I was an artist and a photographer and and every time I heard that that was going to be a movie I got this little mm, envy and also yeah are they going to do it the right way and so it was a you know I, I sort of tracked its journey from it being you know a big studio movie and uh to where to the movie we made, which was very much you know an independent film, and and so when I was, long story short, I'm making it a long story long, but the um, the the rights had reverted back to James, and I I got a hold of him and I said, you know, I hear you have the rights, and he said, yeah, you want them? And I said, yeah, and he said, okay. It was literally as simple as that, and and that doesn't. That's not normal, you know, the way thing, things work. Um, but he said, you know, I, I wrote this in the spirit of art and I know you're an artist and I'd like you to be as creative with the material as you like. I'm, I'm not going to be breathing down your neck and telling you how to do it. I just want you to be creatively free. And that's pretty much a golden ticket for an wow. artist, director, to be able to, to freeform that way. Very cool. Um, yeah. And Aaron, I've, I've heard that you took a road trip with with James to the center of the rehabilitation center in Minnesota. What was that like? Uh, well, it was very, it was really emotional. Um, you know, I, I guess I didn't really kind of think too much about it other than I, I, we were in the midst of uh, writing the uh, the screenplay, adapting the screenplay. Um, and uh, it got to a point where we just needed more information and, and kind of go a bit deeper. And I want to spend some time with James and. And I and I asked him, you know, would he be willing to go back and 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 to the treatment center, and maybe walk me around the places that he went to, and um, and uh, luckily he did, and and we went there, and um, and it was a really um, a really touching sort of experience and a sort of a bonding experience, and uh, it had been the first time he'd gone back to the treatment center since he left, so it was you know it was 20, 26 years sober now, so it was probably you know twenty four years sober and. Uh, and I didn't really kind of realize and register how much that was, how overwhelming that would have been for him to do that. And uh, and uh, it was very moving. There was one point where he stood really still. We'd been going through the building, someone knew, and a lot of it was kept its same structure. And and at one point he kind of stopped still, and 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 he kind of went into his, uh, you know, went into himself a little bit. And and I saw something kind of came over him, and, and I went over to him and said, "Are you okay? Is everything all right?" And he said, "This was the last time I, this was the last place I saw Lily, and uh, it was at this last time that we, you know, sort of had that embrace and that touching moment." And then, and I, it just really informed a lot for for me playing James, but also the moment in, in the story in the film, we have a very beautiful scene with these two characters kind of dancing around one another, and it's a very intimate scene, and and you don't know whether they're gonna. Where where it's gonna go? Where, where it's gonna go from there? You know? Yeah, it does sound like a powerful trip. Mm. Do you remember um, like like one or two moments that really informed a specific part of the the, the movie uh, from the trip? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the treatment center in itself, like the the facility that he went to. Um, you know, I, I guess in our minds we had a, had a more sort of. Uh, psych ward clinical version of what that would be and, and and harsh kind of kind of idea but actually uh the environment was a lot more um like warmer tones and more homely and more nurturing yeah it was more yeah it was more about caring and nurturing in a safe space and and actually i never really kind of thought of 
about it like that until we saw that and it became a character in itself in effect you know um so that kind of informed a lot you know just going on that little trip like that for sure and other than taking that trip what else what other involvement did james have throughout the process well he he was there in terms of i i could call him up and say um this character i'm thinking about you know taking him on this journey and does that feel right and he's like well why don't you call him here's his number you know <laughs> and we were able to do that um and we were able to you know make those connections because of james and and so that was amazing and then when we finished writing the script i said to him you know would you like to read read it and he said would you like me to read it i said Actually, maybe not, no. <laughs> and uh, he said, then I won't. And, uh, and then when we were filming, I said, you're welcome to come to set any time. He said, maybe, maybe I just don't, you know, I don't know how it's going to make me feel. Um, maybe I'll come and I, I don't even know if I'll be able to watch the movie. Mm -hmm. um, so he said, really, I just want you to go and just, you know, just do what you, do what you will with the material. So, but then he did come to set and he came to visit us on a very, very, um, by chance, pertinent day, and um, and he's actually in the movie for a brief moment, <laughs> which I think you know he was sitting behind James, Aaron playing James with James behind James, and I think that was quite that that was quite an intense moment. Can you tell us what scene this is? It's um it's the aeroplane scene. Okay. At the beginning, he's in the in the seat behind, but but it was interesting because you know this this is very much was a indie filmmaking at its best we had uh, we shot it in 20 days and not on not much of a budget and uh, we had to we had to eliminate the scene on the airplane because we couldn't afford the airplane and so we um, we had the pages to the side and and we we had to decide how we were going to get that into how are we going to find the money to to shoot that scene because everyone I said we're going to make a million little pieces. Oh, the guy that wakes up on the plane. And uh, so I knew we had to have the planes. So we had, uh, you know, this is when filmmaking can be so amazing. We had the cast and crew. We had a big meeting. And we were already on a crazy tight schedule of 20 days. And I said, listen, if we wrap early by an hour every day for five days, I think we'll make the money to then be able to get six seats and a bit of roof and a bit of floor of aeroplane. Mm -hmm. And we'll get that to set, and uh, and we did. We wrapped an hour early every day to save that money to create the aeroplane scene. So when the aeroplane bit of, of the aeroplane arrived on the flatbed truck, the cheers that went up from you know cast and crew. But but that's when you know, like I said, indie filmmaking. When when you kind of work in that way, it can create um, a really strong sense, especially with this subject matter as well. Everyone really came together in a very sort of tight-knit group and, and we kind of, you know, came together to, as a community to make this story about a community coming together to, to help James. Wow, very elegant. Now, Sam, you read the book, you were always really moved by it. At what point did yeah. you decide to make the film together? Oh, you want to start? I think I, I think we've always been wanting to find uh, the right project to do together. Uh, since we, when we first uh, worked on Nowhere Boy, I think, which was about 10, 11 years ago now, um, and weirdly, A Million Little Pieces was a book that uh, Sam had, you know, said, "That's the next movie. That's one I want to make, and you'd be a perfect James, and we could do that," you know. But at that point, like she said, it was. It was at these various studios, and many other different filmmakers were were jumping on it, and um, and it just and then so when it when cut to now, I mean, when the rights got reverted back to the writer, and Sam was able to reach out, it just felt like opportunistic, but serendipitous, and like kind of like, well, wow, this maybe maybe this is the project that we get to do together, and even even more so that we can produce, create, have control, write, and 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 keep it. Uh, in, in, in our sort of in, in, in our world of creativity so okay so Sam it sounds like from the beginning you had pegged Aaron Aaron's gonna be a good James like, yeah what, what about him as an actor as a person yeah. well obviously going through the the years of watching Aaron play various roles I, I see how the minute he's you know close the end of the script he's already slipping into character and and so as as we go 
you know, we, I say, on the journey of that character because I'm living with that character from that moment forward as he goes further and deeper and deeper into it. And, um, you know, and so sometimes that's tough yeah. because, um, I don't know, Ray from Nocturnal Animals was a tough person. Was a very tough person to have in the house, <laughs> <laughs> and you know he go. He he was talking about that role. You know, having to become toxic from the inside, and mm. and so his eating habits change. Um, everything shifts and changes. So, so I knew that him playing James would be. He would immerse himself utterly into into that, and so. I knew it was going to be difficult as well, um, but at the same time, being able to shoot something at such a rapid pace, you know, in, in the 20 days meant that he was fully engaged and present as James all the time. So I could just put the camera on him and say, we have one take, you've got to get this. And, uh, and he would because light's going down, time's running out. But, but because he's that immersed, it, it was never like, can you get into character, please? I see. So yeah. Although filming is just 20 days, I imagine yeah. writing, production, getting into the character a year, year and a half? Actually, it was almost two years almost to, take two to write, years. The, write the scripts. And, um, and in between that, we were just, um, you know, not taking other jobs on. And we wanted to, you know, immerse ourselves fully in, in, in that world. And obviously, there's a lot of research that needed to go behind that, as well as just the book. It, it, we really needed to, um, you know, understand the world of AA and... And also have a sort of responsibility to these sort of characters and, and, and to kind of create the authenticity to it. And, um, but, uh, you know, in fact, we would have preferred more time maybe. Um, but like, like this thing almost, this film sort of had its own sort of momentum and, and, and energy that was just like it was, it, it found a bit of funding and then it, you know, and then, and then cast were reading it and then Billy Bob was attached and then suddenly we were like, oh, you know, you're constantly pinching yourself like, oh my God, we're actually making this, this thing's going ahead without us or not, you know, <laughs> it's almost like this we gotta keep up full speed it. train going ahead, you know, so, um, so yeah, yeah, it was, uh, the whole process was a bit like that, you know. Okay, so when I hear, Sam, when I hear you talk about the way Aaron finishes a script and he immediately is already starting to mm. incorporate the character, uh, you know, as a, for, the, for a lay person, we mm. hear about method acting. Did you observe changes in, in Aaron throughout the process? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and it's subtle, you know, it's subtle in everyday life. Um, but on set, it's everything, because it's, it's almost like he's he, kind of protecting the everyone around him from wow. from what's going on inside but as soon as you're on set the doors open and it's right there wow. so it was you know it was intense okay. <laughs> okay does that sound accurate yeah I mean I mean yeah I think uh, you know I'm um, definitely when I walk on set um, or when I'm working it's um, I try and just fully embody that that character and that's kind of my job is to kind of do as much research and prep as possible leading up to that that moment and then uh, try and throw it away and just sort of become that that character and then I, I, I just feel more comfortable that way I've seen other actors who can jump in and out and and that's great and it works well for them I prefer to um, kind of never leave that um, that that character and so in between takes I'm, I'm still I'll be in that accent I'll be if if that character's smoking or what have you, I mean, like I just want to feel like I'm constantly. Um, it's never like too far away, so I don't have to try and pull pull that character back again. I can just kind of just feel relaxed in that character, you know. For sure. Talking about turning on and off, though, I imagine with 20 days, with wearing so many hats, yeah. producing, writing, directing, acting, when 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 shooting breaks ends for the day. I imagine there's things to do at night to just keep production going. Is it hard to switch between those roles, those hats? I mean, I, I, I didn't have to switch it to personalities, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds naturally does that. She does more than what a director has asked of them to do, you know. I mean, she's naturally uh, able to see the production as a whole and produces everything she, she walks onto anyway. I mean, I've seen her do that in her previous... Um, jobs and I think that's why this one was like something we want to do together because I've seen the amount of of actually how much she pulls together um, as a producer uh, as well as a director but um, 
and yet never gets the credit for it or the uh, official control because then you know it's the director then becomes second to a board of you know suits and producers and money you know so it's it's bizarre that it's that way around um whereas in this it was able to uh, allow to have both those worlds but it, it, for me it was the first time i had to kind of jump in and out because i would have just stayed in that but uh yeah there was a lot of uh rewrite issues and things like that that needed to be done and 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 a lot of production meetings cuz I was producing as well and um so yeah it was it was bizarre you know to then jump on set and say you know what I said we set out to do you know and I'm opposite Billy Bob and Gio and people like that you know you sort of you know sort of game on and I got to sure yeah so on um you know, talks at Google, what we're doing right now, it began as authors at Google, you know, many, many years ago. And mm -hmm. whenever we do one of these talks, it amazes me how many Googlers in the audience are aspiring authors or writers. Mm -hmm. So writing the script together, can you tell us what that process was like? Anything fun along the way? Yeah, I mean, Aaron is very patient and can sit very still for hours upon hours. Just I'll, you know, bring coffee and he's just there and he's writing and he's focused <laughs> and he's got the book and he's got the all the cards and the post-it notes and I've got a 20 minute attention span if that so it worked well in the sense that he could do you know basically the bulk of the work and I would come in and say I think that's working really well or this isn't uh, or what about this and and then carry on <laughs> I had a great time. I think it was the most exciting time of the, you know, experience uh, of 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 this whole production. What was that time? I I loved being in that, um, immersed in that bubble, and and kind of the outside world didn't really m matter in, in in that moment in time. It was kind of a beautiful sensation and feeling, and and vulnerable and scary and all those wonderful things. And um, but the 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 brilliant thing of that, why we had the kind of the sort of the confidence, the self-belief to actually believe that we could make a screenplay and, and, and it'd be okay and actors would jump on was that um, I just wanted to um, facilitate uh, the, the, the director's vision. And um, Sam's very beautifully art articulate about how she wants the scene to, to come across and, and, and visualizes it and is able to paint this picture. And, and and it felt like my only job was to really just put those into words and put it into a sort of script format, which I've been reading scripts, for, you know, over 20 years. So um, so it felt like, oh, I, I kind of understand this and, and, and I understand the structure of scripts. And, and so it, it became this sort of puzzle to put together and it was interesting. It was a lot of fun. I thought. Wow. I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, you know, Sam's artistic nature in yeah. wanting to do service to that. I was thinking about, um, uh, you know, you, your career has been varied and diverse. You've mm. worked on huge mega blockbuster projects like Avengers, and you've also worked with very artistic directors. Tom Ford, Nocturnal Animals mm -hmm. comes to mind. Mm -hmm. What's it like working with directors who are artists first by trade and maybe ones who aren't? Um, well, I mean, the way I see it, I mean, Sam has a natural, I mean, because I guess as she's an artist, is, is it sort of, you see it as a, it's always, I want to see Sam's work, it's like it's a production that she's put together herself. It's an idea that uh, is a concept that is so kind of out there that most people go, well, that's not possible, you know. Uh, and so I go, of course it is. We'll just do it like this and like this and, you know. And, and it's like that's kind of what divides the majority of people, the people that are like the, the sort of the, the pessim you know, pessimistic sort of, you know, cynical people that just like... And, and and it's really inspiring to 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 watch and uh, you know it's what one many many things I admire as Sam is that she's sort of nothing is too daunting or scary or too, too much of a challenge. It's it's like uh, you know she's got this beautiful vision and there's no way no, nothing will get in the way of how she'll mm -hmm. she'll achieve that uh, goal or that ambition that she had. Um, so when she walks onto a set, it's a similar kind of thing, but it, it, it's just, she's got a natural gift to be able to sort of have leadership where it, it's not um, uh, um, condescending or anything. It's she, she knows exactly what she wants, and she's got a beautiful way of, of bringing everyone together to, 
to to somehow collaborate to find what that thing is, and everyone feels involved. I mean, you only got to look at the the the, the sort of I mean, the well-seasoned actors that came on to this movie, uh, Jeff Cronenworth, who shot this movie, shot many David Fincher films from Fight Club, The Social Network. You know, Atticus Ross did the score. These are many, like, artistic collaborators that we just want to, who have the same dialogue and language that Sam does. So it's this really, this environment that feels on set is just so uh, conducive to to creating art and, and work and, and and we all work together and collaborate and, and you feel safe mm. uh, and when you feel sort of safe and you trust in the filmmaker and the director uh, from actors and crew you just feel this innate ability to f be able to explore and experiment and that's when you get your best body of work and we only had one take two takes at max that we just had a it was a full speed you know like didn't have time to sort of stop think about it, analyze it ruminate mm, could we do this better could we do we all had to just go by our gut instinct and, and and at the seat of our pants and just kind of go for it and get the reactions right there and then and 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 you know you never saw billy bob thornton or juliette lewis or giovanni ravisi like like panic or worry about that or they, they just went with it too and had that feeling of freedom and trust um and it, and it was just beautiful to, to to be around that you know yeah so you mentioned some great members of the cast and you've both already spoken about how things just sort of clicked along the way as you were making the film did you have actors in mind as you were writing the script yeah we did we had we had pictures around the walls and um i mean you're making it sound like uh, it all just flowed so but it's not quite like that sure. okay <laughs> it was but you know in the sense that that um yes we had the actors in mind and we had um our dream cast and and it was pretty much our dream cast right i mean billy bob as leonard was our dream cast uh, sam you're making it sound like it all went i know oh. <laughs> the obstacles are there it's like childbirth you forget them later <laughs> See. You know, right, right outside when we were uh, before the talk started yeah. you mentioned the ups and the downs could you talk about some of the ups and downs then yeah i mean tackling a book for, i mean f from the beginning tackling a book that's Firstly, it's a big book, it's 500 something pages and you have to condense it to 90 something as a script. So, so then you're, you're, you're basically distilling it down. And so you're, you're losing characters and some one character may represent five in the, within the book. So that's, that's already a challenge. Um, then, you know, the challenge of having a small budget and, and a tight production and, um, that's that's a challenge also and then bring in the challenge of everyone has an opinion on this and It's a book that um, has garnered a lot of attention So then you're on the journey of that also and where does that fit when you're telling the story? Because it's you know, it's something we had to think about and ultimately the decision I made and Aaron made and the people around us that worked on it made was it was the book that we wanted to focus on, the book, the story, and to go on the journey of James. And, um, and we put a quote at the beginning of the movie, a Mark Twain quote, I've lived through some terrible things, some of which have happened. Mm -hmm. And um, for us, that was enough, you know, yeah. to say, okay, we know the history of this book, or, you know, people do, some, some, some don't. Um, but let's put that aside now, enjoy the movie. It's a movie, we're not doing a documentary about everything that happened. But of course, you know, it has every, you know, every discussion we have about this particular film involves the controversy of what happened with James and the book. And, and so it's been, it's, it's an undulating journey constantly mm. um, in the same way that making this film has been. And it's, it's been, it's inter it's a constant interesting discussion. Yeah. Um and uh and yeah, one one we will have for a long time. Probably. Continue to have. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll follow up on that. You know, you've you've had this vision to make this movie into a film or to yeah. see it be made in, into a, this book made into yeah. a film for a long time. What have you taken away or learned from this experience that was maybe unexpected for you? Um I guess from the experience of, I can answer that in a few ways. The experience of making this movie, um, I didn't realize how exhilarating it was to do something at such a fast pace and to really put it together at a pace ourselves. And 
you know, at the level we did and the writing it. So there's the exhilarating part. Then um, there's there's really tackling such sensitive issues and working with people within the industry, um, within the community of addiction, and and learning and understanding every step of the way um, how that's represented, how it should be represented, how this film really should be what it is, very small, independent, but powerful. Mm -hmm. Not with, you know, a huge amount of money that's wasted. I mean, every single dollar and dime on this was, you know, spent well and for an important story. Um, and then the, the most, um, I guess, one of the biggest issues that um, I think come with this also is the discussion around forgiveness mm -hmm. and, and, and really what James and his personal journey has been as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's every step of the way, it's, it's a discussion and, a, and an important one too. Sure. Aaron, was there a favorite um, or challenging favorite scene that you filmed? Uh, I think you know every day was there was there was definitely a scene that would be challenging and something that we had to um, some kind of task to, to overtake. I mean, what would you say was? I mean, it was a challenge, but it <laughs> presented different ones. Um, I, think, so, I mean, there's some some we did a, we shot the scene where he's entering rehab and he's basically sliding in through sewage. Um, into into rehab. That was challenging just literally because we had no money for a special effects. We had to put that together and we could only do it once, so it had to work. So that was a, a challenge. And then... Um, and I mean, that's interesting in itself. It's like, um, you know, on, on a script when you're, when you're writing these things, it's um, an airline producer and a producer's trying to budget your movie and they'll go, right, so that's special effects. That's da 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 da, -da That's this much money. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we've got a few of those moments. So that'll be, you know, special effects. And then, of course, by the time we get there on, on the set, it's, they go, yeah, but that special effects stuff, um, we don't have any money for that. <laughs> and then you're going to go, oh, OK. No, I was mixing that mixture in a big oh, bucket. Wow. <laughs> and, and me and the art department, we were tacking up rubber tubing and turning on a generator, drilling little holes. Is this going to work? Oh, okay. And it, you know, it's, it's actually what, the, going back to fundamentals of being a creative and having been to art school and you have no money, how are you going to make this happen? So that was the challenge. It makes it feel real as well. And it's mm -hmm. another sort of thing of creating the environment for the actors to kind of uh, uh, play in, you know, as well. Mm. I mean, yeah. you couldn't have done that as special effects. It wouldn't have been as, it would have been different. Just something, the, the feeling would have gone, you know. The same with the burning ashes. Of, there's a moment where this uh, is a world sort of crumbling down and the, mm. there's ashes flying around. It was, again, it was like I had two guys by my feet, one in one corner, one in the other. We're like, <laughs> little fans little and fan just bits of dust chucking stuff in just going yeah. <laughs> you know like creating this like tornado wind around us you know and then and we're all like lying on the floor throwing up the ash and then we're all like yes yeah, working this is amazing like, you know, like, oh this is a great very intense scene totally yeah so I, I, you know again I, it's the it's the the glory of making little movies it's it's so you have to be all together as a crew as well right i yeah. mean it's like you know you have to be passionate about I'm, it. I'm really glad that you're bringing up some of this stuff behind the scenes because, uh, yeah. you know, I knew going, I, I was able to watch the film over the weekend and I knew it was a shoestring budget. That's what yeah. I'd read about. And one of the first things that, as a very junior film critic, I, I, I feel you see in a, in, a, in a lighter budget movie is you can sometimes tell in the cinematography and the shot making, you can just kind of see little glimpses of maybe this isn't a big Hollywood production. I couldn't find any of that. I found myself more and more engrossed. I mean, the acting, the writing is fantastic, but the film looks beautiful. The final shot Thank of the movie you. is beautiful. Um, you know, Sam, did you have a lot of these shots planned out beforehand? I mean, the beauty of working with someone like Jeff Cronenworth, who's such an amazing cinematographer, is we could, we could, we had the time where I could talk to him about photography and my love of photography, his shared love of photography. I would send him like William Eggleston books and say, wouldn't it be beautiful if this scene had that element within it? Okay. And so, you know, we're proud of the fact we shot it for nothing for 20 days, but I hope when you see it, you don't feel that. No. That when you watch it, it's as, you know, it looks like any other movie. Um, but uh, but maybe with that knowledge it looks better. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a powerful way to make films to be right on the ground and in it and with everyone and and have it so 
So um, I've definitely felt from doing when you said I've jumped from some independence to block, yeah. blockbuster sort of you know studio movies and things, big budgets. You definitely um, the, there is a it, there it is one for the soul and it is a passion project and uh, and you do all come together as a, as a, as a as a family uh, an intimacy that you don't get on a big budget movie. Um, but you, um, it definitely, um, you, it, it's a different experience altogether. And I think you always feel, you can feel those come through on the screen. There's something that you can't, you know, it's... Uh, you can feel what through, what comes through on the screen? There's, there's it, it, yeah, the creativity or something. There's something where you've bonded all together and you, you're all in it together. I, I, I can't really explain it, but... Okay. Um, when you've had a good experience making something, it's sort of definitely um, there's a, an added sort of thing that you you can't kind of that you've captured that you can't quite get Aim. on okay. yeah okay. on 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 a, on a big budget sort of thing. Okay, so you, so you're you're saying that if it's, if things are going well on a smaller budget project, you can you can feel that camaraderie, you can feel that sense of of we've made something creative and beautiful, and it it's sometimes missing on a larger budget picture. I guess. Uh, as somewhat, I mean, maybe I'm not articulating it very well, but there's, uh, it, it, it's, um, no, you can have a bad experience or something and you could sort of sense something through, throughout and it, and it could even work really well. I, I, I don't know, but it, it's, there's, you, you it just elevate, the project sort of becomes more elevated in, in, in a way because you've, you've really, uh, you've had to be more present and, and, and instinctive and, 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 um, sort of bounce off one another and, and, and the actors have to, you know what I mean? It, it's something that's... Uh, sure. I mean, I, I wish I had a, a better way of explaining it. Do you? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Between you and me, maybe. It sounds like, what? <laughs> Fair enough. I'll put, it, I'll put it this way. I mean, you both mentioned 20 days. There's yeah. times where the sun is setting. You have to get the shot in yeah. two or three takes. Um, did you just expect, hey, this is going to go well, great actors are going to do their job, or no? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, sometimes annoyingly, I'm a forever the optimist. I'm always thinking it's all going to work out really well, and then I get really surprised when there's obstacles, and then I figure out a way around or over them. But, you know, yeah, we, we had our last day, we, we, we had to crunch in quite a lot in the last day, and, and our light was very specific for each moment, and... and and um, one actor who's not one of the main actors, but someone turned up late mm. and it screwed our day. It's sort of just, and, and, and I was like, no, you've cost us two hours. Two hours is, you know, monumental on such a... Yeah. So, so then you're having to kind of catch up and figure out what ways around. And so there's plenty of unforeseen things that are happening. And, and uh, yeah, and, and those hurdles where you're just like, Stay. I think also the, it's those happy accidents and imperfections and things like that that actually sort of make the film sure. I itself. Mm. You know, like if for, every, for whatever reason the sun's going down and you got the one moment to get the scene, it's like, well, that was it, you know? And, uh, you know, whatever was like, well, this happened and that happened. You go, well, now it beca it's become a part of it. It's sort of what made it Mm. More it doesn't help your stress levels. <laughs> I can understand that. I can understand that. Yeah. What do you hope folks will take away when they see the film? Well, I hope folks will see the film because it's a small film and, and, you know, we're pushing it as, as hard out there as possible. Um, so firstly, I hope they see it. And secondly, I think the important thing for us is that, yes, it's a, it's a tale of of the journey in James's case of addiction and his journey through that and recovery. But it's also, there, there's hope in it. And that is, I think, the most fundamental thing that I'd like people to come away with who, because I feel it's, addiction is, is close to most people. I feel within relatives, friends, within themselves. And I feel like this tale is, is not, um, it's not unique, but what is important to come away from it is to see that there is the community there for people who are 
in need of the help mm -hmm. and that the community is a solid foundation for people to lean on and that it takes one person to respond to someone's call for help to 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 get them through that and i think mm -hmm. you know if that's something that can come away from this and and also to know that yeah there's humor in it too for sure <laughs> Do you have plans to work together on a film again in the future? I mean, yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> I'd love that. I wonder if you're going to crack a joke then. I was like, <laughs> no, 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 I'm <laughs> serious. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, I think, I think we're constantly trying to find what that next thing is. Because um, uh, it, it, it's exciting. It's amazing to make movies, you know? And it's hard to make movies, like, and it's generate really the sort of, <laughs> and generate that sort of, um, you know the the people around you, the the crew around you, the money around you, the sort of spark and the thing that happens. Mm. It's it's a real joy to make. Um, it's to mildly make. miraculous when movies come together because you need you know x amount of people in the hundreds to all be in the same place at the same time with the common goal of creating something. I yeah. do feel like it's and it's special when when you get, you know it's you know of course we want to make do something. Again, you know, it sounds like a magical experience to share with a partner. It was. Sure. Um, I want to thank you both for thank being you. here. Thank uh, you. Having seen the movie uh, last week, and I, I really do encourage everybody to go check it out. A million little pieces out in the United States, December sixth. December sixth. There's a lot of hope. There's a lot of humor. Yeah. So thanks again for being here. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you.